what is our personal mobile internet setup? That is not an easy question to answer because it's changing all the time, but we're going to do our best and show you a snapshot of how we stay connected right now. Right now. Right now. Hi there, I'm Sheree. And I'm Chris. And we are the founders of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. And if you have found this YouTube channel, then you might not know much about us personally and our story on the road. So we've been living and working full-time technomatically for 16, pushing 17. 17 years now, working online the entire time and keeping ourselves connected the entire time. So much so that so many people turn to us for advice on, well, how are you doing that? How are you staying connected? Help me. That it turned into our full-time jobs and became the Mobile Internet Resource Center. Now, we both had tech backgrounds when we met and hit the road. We worked in technology, so it was a natural transition, and it really does merge our personal passions of technology, wanderlust, and helping people. So we've been running Merck since 2014 as our full-time careers. We ditched the other jobs. <laughs> And now, all through this time, you know, even before that, we get the question of like, well, what is your personal setup? Just tell me what you personally use to keep connected. And I'll go buy that. And I want to buy that. <laughs> but we tell people, don't copy us, number one, because we're often testing gear, equipment, and plans, and lots of other things, um, just because we need to be knowledgeable to help other people. So we have a lot of gear that we wouldn't necessarily buy ourselves, or maybe we would, or sometimes we have, ge have gear and plans that are no longer available anymore. So the snapshot of what we're using to stay connected personally changes a lot and is sometimes not always the best idea to replicate exactly. <laughs> We firmly believe there is no one right solution for everyone. There's not even a lot of right solutions that fit most. Uh -huh. We all have to evaluate our unique needs and find our unique setup based upon what is currently available. And that currently available is the big gotcha, is the stuff does change all the time. But we have a setup now on our boat, yeah. why not? We also have a, a van and a motorhome bus that we travel in. We split our time between three different nomadic vessels. And at any one time, the setup and um is completely different. Right. We have installed a setup that we've been using for about two or three months now, which is like forever <laughs> in our terms. And and it's basically the the what we consider the, the ultimate setup right now for a boat like this. We actually are able to bring together um well often our common operating thing is we bring together six different 5G plans and services and devices simultaneously, plus marina Wi-Fi, plus Starlink all brought together and combined in a redundant bonded way with Peplink's speed fusion technology so that we have just this incredible amount of redundancy and um, ability to get our work done and to test a lot of different stuff as well. So we can do fast uploads, fast downloads, try different gear, different combinations. But overall, it's been a really great setup and it works really well. I love having so much diversity and redundancy. We literally have connectivity coming out our ears, but we want to preface this. What we have, you probably don't need. No one needs no, this much no. redundancy. It's, it's fun, though. If you're into it, have fun. It's fun. It's fun. I personally can be pretty happy just hotspotting off a smartphone for a lot of stuff. Yeah. I can use a mobile hotspot device. My needs are actually kind of basic. But <laughs> <laughs> they would be. If I was living my dream world of not having to work all the time. But what we do here at Merck with doing lots of these YouTube videos, we do a lot of webinars, we have a lot of video conferencing calls with other industry uh, professionals. We're doing a lot of video content, which requires a lot of bandwidth, especially uplink. Yes. And, and that does always... give us a lot of need. Yeah. And, and then also, of course, we, we live full time technomatically and all of our social and a lot of our social life and entertainment is over internet as well. So we want to be able to stream and we don't want to slum it. We've got a big 4K TV. We want to be able to stream in 4K. <laughs> Sometimes we want to be able to both watch something different at the same time. And then our cat, she is the ultimate user of bandwidth. She is obsessed with watching bird videos on YouTube. So she uses a lot of 4K streaming herself. You know, so cat videos. Now, a lot of the equipment we're going to show you is from Peplink. It is a very popular option for the RVing and boating community. It has become very consumer accessible. It's, it's, and Peplink has gone to great lengths to make their stuff more and more consumer accessible. And they listen to us. We've been beta testers forever. And um, we were Peplink customers buying their gear long before we started uh, uh, testing it and getting early access to stuff. So it's probably would still be what we would buy if we were spending money on this. So what we have now is the pinnacle of technology as of March 2023 when we are filming this. 
anything can change. And this stuff that we're showing today is not necessarily stuff that we recommend. We're going to give you a lot of caveats throughout of why you might want to hold off on purchasing <laughs> some of this equipment at this present. But time. on the other hand, this is all great stuff. A lot of this equipment is provided on extended loan, both between Peplink and our education and action partner at Mobile Must Have. We have partnered with Mobile Must Have for the last couple of years now. Uh, they offer our membership as part of their membership now. So if you want to join with them, you can get our yeah. membership or you can join directly with us. It all works. Uh, they offer discounts to our members that can bring the cost of this equipment down quite a bit less, well, at least more than the cost of the membership. <laughs> um, they also provide technical support in our forums and we co-host a couple of webinar series with them every month uh, for our members to go deeper. And we have a public resource center that we've built out with them with a lot more in-depth content on using this sort of stuff. Okay. Is that enough caveats? That's enough caveats. Now, do you want to see the cool geeky stuff? And let's go on a tour of the tech side of our boat. Welcome to the tech cabinet of our boat, Why Not? This is where the magic happens, where all the wires come together and uh, where our technology kind of lives. And the star of the show here is the Peplink Max BR2 Pro 5G. So this little router we have mounted on the wall brings together up to, uh, currently we've got eight different uh, WAN connections coming into it. So we've, it's got two built-in 5G cellular modems. It's got two built-in Ethernet WAN ports. It's got a USB WAN port. It's got a whole bunch of LAN ports, one of Ethernet LAN ports, one of which can be reused as an additional WAN port via Peplink's vWAN technology, which is new in the Peplink 8.3 firmware that just came out. Um, so it has a whole lot of capability there. Plus it also has Wi-Fi as WAN, so it can connect to other networks, other Wi-Fi networks, and use them as its upstream. So what do we have coming in together here is, well, obviously we've got the two cellular modems, which we put two different 5G plans in and get connected. We can change those around. Um, we've got one of the ethernet ports connected all the way up to the roof of our boat up on the radar arch to a Peplink HD1 Dome Pro 5G. It's a, another externally mounted uh, dome with a 5G uh, modem in it. So that's our third 5G modem there. Plus that also has Wi-Fi as WAN in it. With the Wi-Fi antenna is mounted way up on the radar arch, so that's what we use to connect it to Marina Wi-Fi. So that brings in the Marina source and uh, works great with no cable loss because it's connected from here to here via Ethernet using Peplink's Synergy Mode, also a new feature in the 8.3 firmware that lets this router control that router as if that router's capabilities were just built into here. So we get those two extra WAN ports there. We've got another USB port here that is connected up to the Max Adapter. This is a Peplink's Max Adapter 5G. So it's an external USB connected 5G uh, modem. So it's four more, well, it's uh, one more 5G connection. So we're up to four 5G connections now. The next ethernet port is going to our Starlink dishy system. The Starlink router is tucked there in the back of the tech cabinet. Starlink is mounted up on our radar arch. So we've got Starlink combined with the four 5G connections. We've now got one of the ethernet ports on the Max BR2 coming out and we use it for all our various different 5G hotspots that have ethernet ports on them. So we can hook up another 5G hotspot that we can easily take with us when we leave the boat or just plug it in here for both power and connectivity. So we get another 5G option. And then we use Wi-Fi as WAN coming out of the Max BR2 here to sometimes talk to our smartphones to have an additional 5G connection. So that brings us six 5G connections, um, plus Starlink, plus Marina Wi-Fi, all going at once. And we actually technically could add two more uh, via additional Wi-Fi as WAN connections, but those would be 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi as WAN, which is not really worth it. So a lot of connectivity coming together in that Max BR2 Pro. Okay, so Chris got to be the good mobile internet resource center guy. I get to be the bad guy. So what are the downsides of the Max BR2 Pro 5G? Well, first of all, the cost. It's $28.99. That's $2,899 for a dual 5G router. It offers a lot of capability, but that's a lot of money to outlay on a router, especially when you can buy two individual ones for cheaper. Next, the modems inside. They are 5G modems, but they are X55, which is kind of one of the first generation of 5G modems that are out there. 
They're fine for today's technology, mostly, but they we don't consider them to be very future-proof. And there's a lot of reasons why. If you want to check that out, go check out our modem updates that we have done to go deeper into why X55 is not the technology you want to be investing in if you want something that's going to be modern in a year or two from now. We are anxiously awaiting router companies to be able to start having routers with more advanced 5G modems, which will make these a lot more future-proof for longer. So that's a lot of money to invest um, for a router. Now that's one reason why we use these hotspot devices as external WAN inputs into that router. It's because this Netgear Nighthawk from AT&T, it has the X65 chipset in it, which is modernized and better for being on AT&T's network. So that allows us to have the X65 technology routed into our Peplink router until they are able to catch up in time. Now let's talk about Starlink and why we don't use it as our one and only connection. It is a great option and we're great to have as part of our arsenal, but it's also got some downsides. And number one is power usage. Out here, we're trying to run off of solar and this thing sucks up the battery capacity pretty quickly. If we forget to turn this thing off overnight, we wake up to a dead battery in the morning that we have to recover from, run the generator, or sacrifice in other ways with our power usage. So we use it sparingly when we are on the hook or boondocking because of that power usage. Also, the other downside for us personally is the upload speeds are not quite fast enough for what we need to do. We're uploading large videos like this video, um, if I try to upload this video over Starlink, it could take several hours. If I do it over some of our cellular connections, I can get that down to under 30 minutes. That's a huge difference for us. So we still use cellular quite a bit. We're also doing a lot of broadcasting with webinars where we need that reliability on the uplink power. So we always bond our Starlink connection in with other cellular that is working at our current location to get that maximum reliability of combining those multiple sources. Now, we do have obviously a lot of cellular data plans, more than we need, but we keep a lot of legacy plans around for testing and ongoing. You know, some of these plans you can't get anymore and they have great terms that are unlimited data. And we also get a lot of the new current plans to test them and see how well they work and put them into different bits of gear and see how what they do. So we have a lot of cellular plans. And one of the ways we help manage all of that is we actually have a Peplink SIM injector over here that actually has eight SIM slots. And so with that, we could then, from the Max BR2 or the HD1 Dome, um, select the SIMs, basically assign the slots from the SIM injector, the SIMs there, like a library, and check them out into the BR2, either of the two modems in the BR2, or into the HD Dome, so we can easily compare them, shuffle them around, change out the SIMs without having to fiddle around with those tiny little plastic bits. Um, again, it does save us some time and sanity, but the SIM injector is a bit of expensive gear that we probably wouldn't have. We'd put up with that frustration if we weren't doing this testing and juggling so, so many different plans. But you know, one of the big differences, and one of the reasons we do play with the SIM injector, is because the Max BR2 is hooked up the two different modems on it are hooked up to two different 5G antennas, and sometimes we want to change which plan is going to which antennas. So let's go talk about what is up on our radar arch and, and keeping us connected. Welcome to our flybridge, where we have three different antenna setups going on here. First, in the HD dome, there are four antennas inside of that dome directly connected to the modem, which means there's no signal loss between the antenna and the modem, which is great. However, the antennas inside the dome are not necessarily high gain. So that's why we have the other antenna setups. Right here, we have the Peplink Maritime 40G, which is a four by four MIMO antenna. This thing is massive. It's like a baseball bat size. And that is going down into one of the modems on the Max BR2 Pro 5G. And then the other antenna we have is left over from an old setup that we had with a two by two MIMO setup. It is by pointing. So it's only at two antennas inside of it. And we're testing that right now with the Max BR2 in the two antenna mode, which is a new feature also in the 8.3 firmware. We'll probably eventually replace this with another four x four maritime antenna that might come out by other companies uh, in the future. But for now, that is our setup.
Now, as for the local network on our boat, um, because our boat is fairly big, um, having just the Wi-Fi access point coming from the Max BR2 gives pretty poor performance up in the bedroom when we want to, you know, check our email and see what things are going on when we first wake up in the morning. So we actually have pulled wired ethernet to as many places as we could easily reach across the boat, as well as when we did it when we were running all the antenna cables as well. So we've got wired ethernet going to a lot of places. We've got ethernet switches going to a lot of places so we can spread that ethernet out even more. And we have as many devices hooked up to physical hardwired ethernet as possible, particularly our network attached storage device, our um, all of our streaming devices, our TVs, our um, gaming systems, our streaming devices, everything like that, all physically wired, so they're not trying to put that traffic over Wi-Fi, which Wi-Fi, particularly in a marina, can get very, very congested. Now, but of course, we do want Wi-Fi, and since the, the Wi-Fi on the Max BR2 has trouble reaching the bedroom, we've also added in a dedicated Wi-Fi access point. It's a Peplink AP1AX Lite that we've got mounted actually under the dash of our boat, and that gives really great coverage to the flybridge, the pilot house, and the bedroom, and then the the Max BR2 kind of covers the Wi-Fi in the salon. So they work together and it basically just all one SSID, one network name, just works everywhere we go, kind of as a unified system. It's really worked great that way. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of gear. Oh my gosh, it is. And we could keep babbling on forever <laughs> about all this stuff. In fact, that's how the Mobile Internet Resource Center got started. started is we talk about this stuff a lot probably too much, uh, but we do have a ton of other content that goes over all of this equipment, the basics of it, how to select it, what's right for you. So come over to rvmobileinternet.com to get started. We have free content as well as the deeper content that is included for our members. Now, if you're going to have particular questions about our setup and why we made the decisions we did and what we would do differently. We actually are going to be sharing about it in the shared stuff, uh, share your setup uh, form over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center for our members. So if you've got questions, you can ask them there as a member. Uh, and we will have a companion article on the Technomadia blog going over all the components that we just did in the setup. We'll probably have a diagram uh, put together of all this as well as a cost sheet because I'm kind of afraid to know how much all this what setup is. What the retail is. price would be. Yeah, because um, we do do have the advantage that we work with Peplink and uh, Mobile oh. Must Have, our friends over there, and get all this gear on evaluation <laughs> on, for, so that we can have uh, hands-on experience with it uh, for our uh, members. Uh, on the downside is that means it's always work and we're always testing stuff that's not sometimes in beta shape and all that other stuff. But There's yeah. no such thing as free gear. <laughs> really, no. there isn't. No, <laughs> and it's all on loan, so you know, it'll go back someday potentially. But. Yes. When the new stuff comes out, <laughs> yeah. cycle it out. <laughs> Uh, so this stuff is changing all the time. Like I said, this was filmed in March 2023. If you're watching this any other time, who knows what we actually have installed on our boat, our van, or our bus at present time. Because yep. we always are changing out for the newest, the latest, and the greatest. Because <laughs> that's our job. That's our job. Aren't we supposed to retire? Wait, we should be doing less of this. And yes, and actually, we are going to have our team members share about their setups as well. So it's not just us sharing this sort of level of geeky detail. Yes, so uh, stay tuned on this channel. Um, our other team members um, who are also various forms of nomads, they will be sharing their setups. And um, you'll see there's a wide variety that's out there. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go about assembling your unique mobile internet setup. And there really is no one right way. No, yeah, but there's so much good ways to stay connected. And the more redundancy, the better. Except maybe you go too far. <laughs> we went too far. We went too far, okay. <laughs> too far. Too far. Just slightly. Just slightly. Too far. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.